<laughs> Love you too, Sam. Okay, guys. So when um, Kara sent out the like talk topics for this year, God was really highlighting tonight for me, which is truths and lies. And truths and lies have played like a huge part, not only in my life, but in my relationship with Jesus. So when I was in middle school, I started believing a lot of lies about myself, which I feel like is pretty common, right? Lies that I'm not pretty, I'm not smart, my friends don't really love me. And I was like, at my core, I knew that these were lies. Like I recognized that. But the truth that I was trying to cover these with were circumstantial. Like, Elise, actually you are pretty because you got all those comments on your Instagram. Or, like, actually you are loved because your friends invited you to hang out this weekend. But, like, what happens when next weekend my friends don't invite me? Or next weekend I don't get enough comments on my Instagram? So I was really broken because I, like, thought I knew the truth, but this truth was really circumstantial. So then I went to CYC my freshman year. We had all those talks on identity, and we got these cards that were like our identification cards. And on mine, I wrote, I am worthy, I am loved, and I am beautiful. And I taped this on my mirror, and every day I would recite these affirmations, like really simply, this is how Jesus sees me. And then as I got comfortable with that, I started taking it into prayer, saying like, Jesus, like, what truth do you want to speak over this? What's your unchanging truth? Because his truth, what he says about you, is not circumstantial. It does not change. Like, that's something that you can latch on to. And so that's what I started doing. And I was so confident in not just who I was, but whose I was. And this love, like, that I felt God, like, just pouring out into me, I couldn't help but, like, proclaim to others. And I was so, like, on fire with my ability to bring others to Jesus that, like, I felt unstoppable. I felt untouchable. But one thing I've also learned is that the devil really hates success. And he could no longer attack my identity because I had the tools to combat that. So he started attacking something a little bit deeper. And that was my belief in him. Every time I'd go into personal prayer, um, I was like flooded with these lies about who Jesus was. And it almost got easier just not even to pray. Like, okay, I'm giving in. Like, <laughs> I can't deal with these lies anymore. So I stopped showing up to prayer. And then I went to camp, and I was like, this is the moment. Like, this is when all lies just go away. But I was putting Jesus in a box. And I was, like, telling him, like, this is the only time I believe that you can work. And when I was at camp, I still experienced a lot of lies. But I was resting in the Spirit one night. And Jesus was speaking to me that the only place that we have, like, no lies whatsoever is when we get to heaven. And this isn't discouraging, like, oh, I have to live the rest of my worldly life with lies. But every time we pray, we get access to heaven. Like, every time you come to Jesus, you get that heavenly truth. And so what he was speaking to me was, like, by not showing up, it was really detrimental to myself. And so he was speaking, like, even if you're not feeling it, like, even if you're going to prayer and you're still having lies sometimes, like, he's still working so powerfully, and that's, like, heavenly access right there. So like what I want you to take away from this is like, yeah, I'm still struggling. Like today, I just had a two hour conversation with someone and there were a lot of lies that I had to work through. Like once you meet the Lord, it doesn't mean that all these lies just disappear, but it makes it a lot easier to fight them. So I challenge you to find like those lies that you're believing and find the truth that corresponds the opposite of it. Because it's in there, it's in the Bible, and that's what's never changing.